Next, I asked Donna if schizophrenia affected her duties as being a single mom. Yes. It did. Mm -hmm. um. When I thought this is what they tell me, well, it's happened, like, I've had, like, three episodes where I had to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and had to be Baker acting. My daughter has a call. Wow. Because they took me to the hospital and they said I was well uh -huh. and I still wasn't making any sense. Yeah. So the only way they could get me back in the hospital was to bake her at me. Because her doctor here wouldn't help us anything. So then that's when they, we had to, what is it? Baker act. Baker act there. And we didn't want to do that. No, no, you know, no. But, you know, but we talked to her and she agreed to it. And uh, I told her the policeman was there to take care of her and she said, yeah. I said, yeah, he's going to take care of you. And you went, Willingly. Nicole is the one that called the police, and Nicole had a hard time. Yeah. Because it was her mom was going to be taken away. Took her to Halifax the first time to mm -hmm. get help. They gave her back to Over in Daytona, mm -hmm. Halifax? She, she actually went in willingly the first time. She saw wood growing out of the room she was in. Mm -hmm. And they gave her back to me eight hours later, which I thought was a little bit odd because I didn't think they did think anything. They did anything. And they said since she wasn't a harm to herself or others, and she didn't seem threatening that she could be taken home. And as she's walking out, she says there's a potato in her apple juice. That's not good. Next, I asked Nicole how she dealt with her mother's schizophrenia. I almost built my own sense of reality because I'd go around families that would have dinner and all that. And, and so I tried to stay out of the house as much as I could to be around what I thought was a functioning family. Was the American family. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would just kind of build my own false sense of reality around me. Do you think there's a resentment by seeing being around, you know, your friends' families and seeing your family life, and you're like, wow. You know. At the time, there was. From the age of about 15 to 18, mm -hmm. I resented my mother because I finally knew what was wrong with her, and I, and. I know now it's the disease and not her, yeah. but at the time, I blamed her. I blamed her for not, you know, giving me the life I deserved, and, and, you know, why didn't we have family dinners, and why didn't we bond like other families? Like, she knew nothing about me. I knew nothing about her. And, you know, she, she, one year she, I don't forget, she thought I was, um, in, let's see, 10th grade, and I was in 8th grade. Oh, wow. Well. She didn't know anything about me. I would tell her, I'm like, I don't want to be anything like you. I, I, you know, I hate you, and I hate what you've done, you know, blah, blah, blah. You were working at the time. Right? Yeah, I had a lot of problems at work, dealing with people. Where were you working? It's Southern Bell. Southern Bell, so a telephone company, you Yeah, said? for 27 years. 27, wow. Any work, you managed to work that long with schizophrenia? Yeah, but I took a lot of... I never took a real vacation. I used my vacation for sick days because sometimes I'd get up and I just couldn't couldn't cope. As I asked this question to Donna, she began to explain the delusion that is called persecurity. Persecurity is when one believes that they're being followed or under surveillance, or that she or he is being made fun of or tricked or treated very unfairly by others. They may feel very frightened or paranoid. And always thinking that people are talking about you. Oh yeah, that must have been awful. Especially in, a, in an environment where you have to be social. Yeah, I wasn't good in social. No. Just wait, I'm still not. Home life, what was that like, schizophrenia, you know, up until now? I always thought I was adopted. You thought you were adopted? Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe that just had to do with one of your, um, you know, being paranoid because you thought you weren't ever good yeah, enough. Yeah, I had a lot of paranoia. You were never good enough, probably you felt. Yeah. You were kind of like, okay, I was adopted. I don't belong here. Yeah. That's when the, the suicidal thoughts probably started too, right? Or the first time I was suicidal, I was 12. Oh, that's really young. Mm -hmm. Do you even know what suicide is? 
when you were going to schizophrenia, you know, like in the hospital, did um did they ever like recommend you need supported housing, job training, other community support programs? They told me I would never hold down a job again. You can never hold down a job again. Yeah. So did they ever did they ever offer job training or um, supportive housing for you? No. No comp no no community support programs for you to join. Well, I went to some group therapy. Group therapy. But I didn't like it. So that didn't help. No. Being around people that were like you didn't help. Well, the people they just lump uh, groups together. So they didn't they didn't like they didn't suffer your disorder no. then. Well, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem to help, no. no. And plus, I didn't know I had schizophrenia. So they put you in a group where you didn't know what, what was wrong with you. Right. Yeah, that I whole. had a personality disorder. Well, so they want you to talk about something else than what you're actually suffering from. Yeah. That's, yeah, that doesn't seem to help at all. No. It's believed that mothers with schizophrenia, it's passed on to their children. Does that worry you? No, I don't think my my daughter hasn't been diagnosed with it. She doesn't show any signs of it. She's very secure, and I, ju I just don't think she has it. She's very rational, That's where good. I was still right. It's good that you can you can say that too. Yeah. It's good to know early. It really is. But do you believe that some that that it can it can it can like get worse? For her, like what it did for you, you know, because you said it didn't happen for you until recently where it got pretty bad. Does that worry you about Nicole? Well, no, I, I had other episodes. I've had many episodes all during my life. Next, I talked to Donna about schizophrenic episodes. These episodes entail a person losing contact with reality. They may hear or see things that are actually there or happening, experience paranoia, and believe other people are being mean to them or trying to harm them and the inability to communicate in a meaningful way. What were these episodes like? Uh, well, they always start out with being suicidal. Did, and did they tell you what to do, the voices? They would tell me how to think, bad things. They, it was all negative things. Mm -hmm. Like I always had thoughts my daughter was going to die. Telling her, like, you're worthless, you're not going to do anything. And, you know, those, are, those were in her head for years and then hallucinations. What was the hallucinations like? Well, I had Michael Jackson in my bedroom performing. So you were at a concert in your bedroom? I was at a concert. And I had wood growing from my ceiling down, but I couldn't touch it. I kept trying to touch it. And I had wood growing up through the carpet. Wow. And it all seemed real. Now, how did that, now, was this around your daughter, Nicole, or your, or your yes. mom? Yes, this was around my daughter, Nicole. And, and so was this here at your house yes. that happened? Mm -hmm. Was she around you when you were saying all this and hallucinating yes, all this? Yes, they were the ones that told me what I did. Wow. Because I wasn't aware. Wow. I was totally out of it. Wow. It's something you try to manage every day, but sometimes it just, get overloaded, wow. where you totally break from reality. It's like tripping. Tripping. That's, that's a good word for it, the hallucinating. And, and you hear music and... Sentences not going together, right? Like. Yeah, I was chasing dots. Chasing dots. At this point, she was chasing dots around the house, and, and it was unreal. And then when she uh, saw these, you thought it was that? No. I thought it was some kind of an insect because you were trying to get them off oh, the floor. Oh, I, I know. I was trying to pick them up. I don't know. And but I can remember. I she they thought they were at the door. She was going to get them from the door. It's like a cat with a laser light. Kind of like. Everything was exaggerated. Like my teeth is just a little space. Mm -hmm. She thought it was larger. And every time she'd look at me, she'd say, oh, you've got a big space. I thought I won the lottery. Uh-huh. I thought people were just keeping me there. I was waiting to get out. So when I went in, she grabbed me and didn't want me to leave or she went there. Now, where was this at the lottery? It's Stuart Marksman. It's like her body was here. Her mind? I, I can't tell you where it was. 
she can't remember everything that went on when she was taking, you know, when she was having that breakdown. She only can remember things that we tell her that happened. Because mm -hmm. for herself, she doesn't remember. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a break from this reality for her.